We have a very powerful woman in the studio, a phenomenal woman, I dare say, one who has discovered social media and used it as a tool for achieving her dreams and changing lives. From being a social media blogger to being an influencer, today she's an author, and she'll be joining us to share with us her journey, her story. She's also the convener of the New Media Conference. Yes. Her name is Tosin Ajibade, but lots of you know her as Olori Supergirl because she is the founder of the Olori Supergirl blog. Hello. Hi. Good to have you. Thank Why you. Why are you so to see that picture of I yourself? was like, what? Well, we're the best team. We go to root out pictures Thank that you. That you never expect. Shout out to our producer, Valentine. Thank you. All right, Tosin. So you're a social, you're a blogger, you're an influencer and yes. more recently an author congratulations yeah. on that thank you how does that make you feel uh well i i don't know i i just i think i am humbled about everything that has happened so far and um like it's my own journey so i'm taking it a step at a time and um yes yeah, so i think more will still come but for me right now this is where i am and i'm grateful Let's go back to the beginning of the journey. Okay. You know, I'm sure this is a story you've told thousands and thousands of times. And I decided to put in a book. Great. <laughs> so just give us a sneak peek. Okay. You know, was it planned? Was it something you stumbled into? And how profitable really was it at the time? Okay, it was something that um, was not planned and I stumbled into it. Okay, so it started from passion and then now it's something profitable. And then I'm building a brand with it, evolving over the years. And I've been evolving over the years. So when I started, I had no idea of what it was. I Everything I know today was self-taught. And I had to put my own time, you know, learning, asking questions. And I had people who I didn't even know from Adam who actually helped me while, while I was grow, uh, growing in the whole industry. So for me, I didn't even know it was going to be profitable. I didn't know it was going to, you know, yield, you know, results or maybe bring money out of it. Usually when you go to the cafe to check your... Or your messages in your Yahoo mail. It's just maybe check on friends or cousins or family. So you just go there, 30 minutes, just 30 minutes. I and doubt you're if out. this new generation would ever know what what's yes, cafe cafe is. Are, you know, so, but for me, that was my office. You know, spend time, usually spend time in the, in the summer cafes, like hours in the summer cafe to walk and just sit on Facebook and do what? Just to talk about this, do promotions and. Here we are today. Like I actually didn't know it was going to, you know, yield profit. Who were your core influencers at the time on social media? Who were the people that? <laughs> in, oh, those are sneak, sneak, sneak <laughs> into your book. Yes. Okay. I actually mentioned Esconed. Esconed was someone. Oh, sorry. Esconed is someone that she's actually a female, and um, Lida is a good writer. She is a good writer. She also started at Unilag. And on Facebook, she had this long note. You know when you know on Facebook that you have this long note that you can write. So I I actually stumbled on her platform or on her page, you know, one time. And then before before I knew it, we became friends on the platform. And then Twitter started. So Twitter was then difficult. But I saw that she was, you know, getting it on Twitter. Then I had to learn. And one forty with one forty characters, you have to be creative and all. So yeah, Escola is one of actually one of the first set of people, one of the pioneers. I would say to today that I still acknowledge. No matter where I go to, she was one of the first set of people that actually, you know, started this social media influencing too. But she's also, she's also, you know, pursuing her career. So I'm, I'm sure she's doing so well, you know, wherever she is. At the time you started blogging, I'm sure blogging wasn't a thing that people looked up to. Everybody wanted their mm. child to either be a doctor or yes. a lawyer. How was it for your family when you told them, you know, <laughs> I'm a blogger, I'm a professional Actually, blogger. they told them. <laughs> it happened. <laughs> they got to know about it and they accepted it. But they had questions. Why this? Then what? Then, um, okay, so... Okay, I studied accounting in school, but I'm not even practicing at the moment. So uh, my dad always wanted me to be a chartered accountant. You know, I also did ATS and all I failed. And then, you know, just went back to what I, I you know, knew how to do better. So my dad was a little bit disappointed in me that I didn't, you know, finish what I needed to, like what I went to school for. And I was doing something entirely different from what the world knows <laughs> today. But I thank God that um, the story has changed now. I mean, everything is all accepted. Like I said, I didn't tell them. It all happened. They saw it. They accepted. They saw the results. They saw everything was coming, you know, and then they were happy with it. Was there ever a point during your career where you felt this blogging thing is not for me? I'm going to pack it up hmm. and go and look for a job in a It's band. actually happened. It happened. I think it happened several times. Um, and then I was just frustrated. Okay, no money. Money was not coming. I was always spending money, you know, buying data or, you know, going online and everything. But at the end of the day, you push, 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 push. You get frustrated. You know, because the online community basically are people that you don't see, but they know you. Like if I walk on the street now, ah, like yesterday I was in the market yesterday, oh, hi, hello, Spago, hi. You know, will you, you won't actually expect for me to say I'm not a Spago. Of course I'm a Spago and I can go to the market whenever I want to, you know. So usually when, you know, situations like that happen, I just try as much as possible to even manage it. So a lot of people see me, 
they, they see the platform, they know the platform, they know my face, but I don't know them. So when you're actually conversing with people, you don't even know them. So all you need to do is just to try and understand, okay, the kind of people, the set of people that actually following your platform and they just, you know, work with it. With regards to blogging in Nigeria, there are okay. certain blogs that have a negative connotation. There are certain mm. blogs you pray that your name doesn't get mentioned <laughs> on because you know that, first of all, the caption would be cheesy, mm. the comments would be cheesy. So you're just thinking to yourself, no, blogging has been seen in some cases as some people do brutal, dirty blogging, yes. brutal and nasty. Yes. How would you describe a Lori Supergirl blog? We, we try to keep it simple and we try to make people understand that we are not even a gossip blog. People say, oh, gossip, gossip, gossip. Or, or even if uh, sometimes when I go for events and they see me, oh, Lori Supergirl blogger, the next thing they just change the conversation. I'm like, okay, you guys can go ahead, you know, to talk about whatever it is that you want to talk about. I'm not really into picking or prognosing into, into people's story. But because of the work that we do, it's entertainment, celebrity news, we have to give our followers and our readers the stories that they need to know, which is part of the job. But on a normal day, I don't go into people's businesses. I don't. So yes, I get I get that feeling some of the time. Oh, yeah, because you're this. Oh, because you do this. Oh, uh, you know. And it becomes um, it's actually it's actually been a struggle for me for years. So, but at the end of the day, it's not has there ever it. been a point where you had to report something? That was um, an information about someone that was really close to you, really dear to you, but you know it was information <laughs> that, you, that would break them and you had to make a decision to publish no. this or not? No. no. I wouldn't do that to my friends. I Thank God I'm your friend, though. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't do that to my friends because something happened, I think, two months ago and um, a friend had to, it was, you know, on a Sunday morning. It was, I, I went for a party the night before and then I was still sleeping Sunday morning and then I, was, I saw missed calls. So I actually thought I missed, I had, I also wanted to travel at that time. So I thought I missed my flight or something from, uh, so, and when I called, I said, oh, please go on Instagram and see what's happening, blah, blah, blah. And then when I checked, I was like, oh my God, this is not, this, this should not happen. You know, and I kept calling the person, but she didn't pick and all of that. So we just had to leave it that way. People actually went under the comment to say, eh, if you are now here, yeah, bloggers, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, you guys don't know the relationship I have with this person in particular. And because of how everything you know, went viral in the speed of time, within an hour, it was already on another platform that's one of the biggest platforms on Instagram that once you are there, you are there, and there is nothing you can do about it. We tried as much as possible to bring down the story, but there was, it was not... You know, was it um, a story that you put out? We didn't. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm explaining to you. The person was really close to me. Someone caught my attention to it. We tried as much as possible to get the person, you know, on the old. And before we knew it, in, in, in an hour, the story went on a bigger platform on Instagram that, of course, even if you plead or you beg them with money, they would not put down any story for you. So we had to just let it go and everything just went boom hand. Wow. Uh, but we didn't put it up on our platform. I'm sure that with, with what you do, you do a lot of PR as well. So yes. what would you say is the best way to combat social media criticism and negative news about one? Um, okay, so I think I'll relate it to the story of what happened recently with the old Banky W thing, you're writing in this and yes. when, I, when I saw the video, I was like, okay, here we go again. And I read, actually I had, a, had, a, I had a, you know, similar experience you know, to it um, years ago. Four years ago, I got my first car and uh, I had a friend of mine who told me you know, face to face to say, oh, my car does not fit my status, you know, and it got to me. Not just at that moment, she kept saying it over and over. And before I knew it, I was like, yeah, it's true. This car does not fit my status. Let me, you know, you know, sell the car and then use the money to buy another car. But I didn't actually shot myself in the leg. And all. So when the bank W story came out, I was just like, you know what? I feel um, the mentality or the mentality is because you are this, you need to be this. And at the end of the day, they don't know where your funds or your money go into it. So I think it's just a general mindset. On the other hand, I saw that Banky responded yesterday and he gave a very good reason. I know in his response, I know. So I, um, for me, basically, I just think that um, the whole, <laughs> I just, for me, I just feel that, um, I mean, we should just mind, we should just mind the way we say things and also, um, the way we actually put things out there. I'm also saying this too for myself because, of course, we run the platform and all. But when it now comes to response, there are some things you don't even need to respond to. There, I, I tell people today that Twitter was really as it was as bad as what it what it is actually today. It's not even as what it was then, 2009, 10, 11. If, I mean, if you saw, we were on Twitter at that time and you survived, you actually savage Twitter. Yes, it was. Then today is just play. Like you're not even. It's either you're there for one thing or the other, and then you're out. But then you have to just, you know, stand your ground and just make sure that you pull through. So I just feel that when you need to talk, talk, and then make it very simple. And then when you don't need to talk, when you don't even need to respond to them, just stop it. I remember years ago on Twitter, 
celebrities will get bashed immediately they'll respond i tell them i just said to myself i just said to myself do you know you don't need to respond to these people you don't know them they only know you and that's the way i see things so when some people tell me things on social media you don't know i mean i don't know you but you know me so i won't even respond to you, you what's know? the most painful thing you've heard about yourself on social media um that i'm proud <laughs> yes wow yeah and is it true <laughs> oh well i don't know <laughs> Well, I don't think so, but... Well, people... No, honestly, people said... People actually... I actually heard people say that, and um, I asked ask myself, Tosin, are you proud? <laughs> Maybe it's the way people see me. I'm actually this... Uh, I have this straight face. I don't take... And, and I don't take nonsense from people. So, and um, I try as much as possible to actually put a boundary to how far or how close people can actually come to me. So, it depends on how you see it. You might say I'm proud. It might be true to you. Some, some might even say, oh, she's humble. It might be true to them. Whatever, whatever it is that you hear, just accept it. But I know I'm not proud. <laughs> All right. Now let's talk about your journey from your blogging and influencing to starting the new media conference. What yes. informed that decision? Wow. Okay. So in 2015, <laughs> um, it was um, between either you are number one or you are nobody. And then I wanted, I wanted something to just make me stand out from the crowd. And because already at that time, too, everybody had a blog or everybody was just, or everybody was online at that time. And I wanted something still different from being tagged as a blogger or a male blogger. So I, um, the whole idea of the New Media Conference came after uh, a session at the Social Media Week in Lagos. We had a session, a master class, and we had like 70 people who actually attended. It was strictly an hour. So I was like, so why is that people form a lot online? Or are people, people form to not to, like they want to learn, they want to ask questions, but they don't want to go for it. So there, it just gave me, a, it just gave me that insight. Okay, this is what people want. This is what they want to know, and then we created the new media conference. So we're running it um, since 2015, and this is the fifth edition this year. We had two editions last year, one in Lagos and one in Nairobi. Yeah. And how, wow, wow, that's that's really <laughs> impressive. You yes. don't stop, do you? Mm -hmm. So the next edition is happening this week as well. <laughs> yes, this week. When? This week oh, on Friday, July 20, um, All right. starting uh, 9 a.m. at um, Great Event Center. How can people register for it? Um, w uh, w dot newmediaconference.ng. Okay. Yeah, registration is free. But the master class is uh, at a fee. Okay. Yes. Now let's talk about your book, finally. Now you've been doing a publication on social media, the hashtag the Mis Misfits Fit to Hero, Hero campaign yes. as yes. well, to talk about people, that different people have been sharing some very inspiring yes. stories. In fact, I plan to do one as well. Please. I will, I should. <laughs> Tell us what inspired you writing that book. <sighs> okay, so... Um, uh, like you said, like you mentioned earlier, I think, was it offline or I can't remember, but my story is not really out there, but people know and they're attracted to the old success around it. Oh, how did you get your name, Oris Girl? The name is so creative. Oh, I love the name, blah, 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 and it goes on and on. And then I have to explain the name, Olori Supergirl. It's different. Olori is different. Supergirl is different. And they all came from the things that I love and the things that I also represent, basically. So writing the book for me was just to, you know, tell my own story, the way it happened. My truth, basically, is actually putting out myself out there and also letting people know that uh, no matter where you are or no matter who you are, you can actually be who you want to be. If you put your art, set your art, you know, into it and then you're focused and you're determined, it's not just by saying it, it's by doing the work, you know. So um, the book is just about my journey, about my journey, how I also stumbled into social media, how, I've, how I fell in love with social media. I love my job. I love doing it. This is what I do every day. And um, it's from passion and now it's a profit for me. And um, I'm building a brand around it. I'm, I'm actually expanding my tentacles and I'm, you know, doing what I can do, you know, and you know, doing everything I can. So that's, so that's what the book is all about, basically. And um, I hope people, you know, buy. And um, yes, the hashtag, the mystery to you is just to explain or let people share their um, story how who they were before before they became who they are and i had a lot of celebrities who actually joined me you know you know with the campaign I, and i'm really grateful for that because it's not easy to get all of these busy people to actually get you get you on to get them on a project yeah. you know so but i also have friends of mine who have also shared their own story and i really really appreciate them for doing that so it's basically from my own angle to the same thing i was a regular girl I was this, <laughs> but now you were a super girl. I was super Once girl. regular, now super. You know, so I was just, I was just this um, young girl. Like I didn't really care about um, music. Uh, no, I didn't really care about going out, so socializing with friends or having friends around me. And all of a sudden, I'm the one that has that has a lot of friends and people all around me. So it's, I, I moved from that, you know, shy girl to okay. This girl, she's now on the screen, spotlight, everything, social media, 
work up there. And now you're, well. you're someone who networks with people a lot because you know now yes. it's important for business. <laughs> yes. You have to give us one tip for networking. For the shy girl or shy boy, <laughs> shy man, shy woman watching the show, okay. what would be your one tip? Um, I, um, one tip is to get prepared and um, also look the part. Um, okay, so when I started, I never looked... <laughs> <laughs> You're trying to remember how you looked at the time. <laughs> okay, sorry. I'm actually laughing at myself. I didn't even look. Uh, I didn't look the soup. I didn't look the part. Supergirl. Are you sure you're super, always <laughs> like? Are you sure you're always Supergirl? Yes, I am. Oh, okay. Then I then realized that okay, I was not looking the part. People actually thought I was actually um, impersonating someone, and then I had to make sure that I put a face to the name and put myself out there more. You know, so it's important that you you also you're also confident and bold about what you do and what you represent, and also make sure that you keep in touch. It's very it's very very important. It's just beyond sharing information and contacts. It's also by saying, hey, I met you at this event. Keep in touch. Keep very in touch. important. Yeah. Now your book, the title. What's the title of your book? Okay, so the title of my book is Olori Supergirl. From social misfits to social media era. Interesting. And <laughs> by Friday, you're launching the book yes. at the New Media Conference as well. Yes. So people can get to buy it after then. Yes, of All course. Right. Interesting. Of course. Yes. Okay. What, what, what would be the takeaway feeling you'd want people to have after they read that book? You know, there are some books you read and when you're done, you're excited. There are some you read and you're crying. And there are there's some, some you read and you're like, oh, waste of money. Five I should have been using to, you know, watch a movie yes. or something. Yes. What is that feeling you want people to take away after reading your book? Uh, okay, so this is it for me. And I'm really, on, I'm being honest about this. I want people to um, get inspired. You know, no matter where you are, your journey, your status, or whatever it is that you're doing at the moment, it does not matter. For me, it started um, as a joke. And it didn't really, I didn't really know what I was doing. But today... I am really proud of who I am and the person that I've become. And I want people who buy the book or who read the book to also feel the same and also walk on the journey. Be true to yourself. Do not feel under pressure or do not say because this person is getting it, you need to get it. Everybody's journey is different. So make sure that I just want people to get inspired and also believe in their in their self that they can actually do it and they can you know, be out there. Yay! That's a very fantastic message. Everyone needs a little dose of inspiration of these days. You know, very, very important. Yes. Now, what are the plans for you? Are we seeing... Can you give us a sneak peek into some of the other plans? Because it seems now you want to do everything. Are you planning to go into movies at some point? No! Or I want to be a music artist. Uh, no, no, no. But you I can know. sing yeah. and I can act, but I'm not going to movies and I'm so, not singing. A, a sneak peek into... What's the plan for the Olori Supergirl brand in, say, five years? Um, okay, so for the brand right now, we are just... I'm just trying to make sure that everything is... Um, in place again, you know, before you rise, before you rise, and we're actually at that low level right now, and we're trying to put everything all, all over again together. Um, of course, we've, we've delved into uh, online TV, which is where the world is right now, and uh, we're actually planning on things that we're going to do in the near future. Um, I, I think that's just it for now, basically. Okay. But for me personally, I'm still doing my own thing, doing it, taking, a step, taking it a step at a time. I'm not chasing anybody. I'm not following anybody's footsteps. I'm not anybody's shadow. I'm just being me, being myself, and then I'm making sure that I'm putting the best of me out there. As an aside, I'm totally unrelated. <laughs> Is social media putting you under the pressure to get married? Of course. Uh, Tosi, when I get married, I'm like, uh, my private life, I have no comment on that. <laughs> no, but honestly, I really don't have any comment on that. I don't put my personal life out there. And I it just feel... <laughs> Oh God of mercy! People don't. People actually don't understand what social media is or how it works. Are the ones that are actually, you know, hungry to put themselves out there, you know, spotlight. Oh, because this person oh is engaged. Oh, I want to be engaged. This person's baby shower. Oh, I want to do. It. And then it goes on and on. before you know it, you are reporting back to those set of people, you know. And then you forget that you have Oluria B. You have um, someone in your family who an elder who can actually talk to you and help you put things together. So the first thing they remember is their phone. They go on social media and eh, I broke my, you know, and just, you know, start spilling the tea that we don't even need. You know, a lot has been happening recently, you know, the McLaughlin's, you know, talking about the real father. A lot has been happening on social media. And I feel for Aminat, she does not really need to explain to people how her family is or who her family are. Just give them entertainment and then they just... So now, oh. being someone that puts other people's personal information outside, <laughs> you choose not to put your own personal... Do you because... ever feel tempted? To want to post a bit of your personal life. Uh, yes, sometimes. And then I remind myself, mm, Tosin, you know what? Mm, go back. Take it back. Take it back. <laughs> you know, and I just, you know, but I just, I'm just, I'm just a simple person and I do not like to put myself out there. So I just want to do my work. See me, it's my work. Whatever I do is my work. You see a little bit of me 
in it. But at the end of the day, it's just my work. It's just your work. She doesn't like to put herself out there, but she will put your information out there if you put it out there by yourself. So be yeah. careful and watch out. At the end of the day, we've had the pleasure of speaking with Olori Supergirl, Thank Tosin Hajibade, who shared with us her journey, her story, the plans for the future. And we're very excited for you. Thank you very much for Thank joining us. Thank you so us. much. Would you at least tell us what Olori Supergirl means? I will. <laughs> okay. I will. So Olori means queen in Yoruba. And Supergirl came from the cartoon Superman. So I'm actually a cartoon freak. I love hey. illustrations. I love art. And um, I'm just that. I have that cheeky, cheeky, cheeky. I used to have a crush on Superman. Please do. <laughs> still, <laughs> still. <laughs> you know, so but I came from that. And, um, um, okay, so Olori means queen. And I love royalty. You know, um, I really wish I can, you know, get married to a prince, you know, and all of that. But uh, so I gave myself the name Olori. And the Supergirl came from the cartoon Superman. And I just merged the two together. At first, it didn't make sense. Just what are you doing? Yoruba and English, like Olori, Supergirl. Like, so it didn't make sense to me. But at the end of the day, it became a powerful name and very attractive, creative at the same time, and unique. So nobody can use that name. Again, <laughs> indeed, you are a queen and Thank you. you know, you're royalty yourself. And we want Thank to you. encourage you and wish you all the best Thank you with so the much. new media conference and the book and the many projects that you have lying Thank ahead. So we much. hope that Olori Supergirl has been able to, you know, influence and inspire a couple of decisions. For those of you who have been thinking, discouraged, we hope that you've been encouraged by this interview. And now when you get to read her book, you'd even be further encouraged. Her book is out. It'll be officially launched on Friday. Please do well to support. Get your copies and read it and let her know what the feedback is. If you did not like the story. I feel there was something she did not tell her. You know, go and ask her questions on social <laughs> media as well. Thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you so much. To enjoy more of this, our Ubonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.